Now we'll discuss the apical four chamber view. If for the long axis and short axis view, you get better images when you turn your patient 90 degree to the left. For the apical view, usually what works best is to ask the patient to turn around 30 to 45 degrees left. So that increases the contact of the apex with the chest wall. And also you can ask the patient to put his hand, um, his left hand underneath his head because that will increase the space between the ribs and you really don't have a lot of space to work there so it's going to be always small movement. Again we'll try to approach this in a uh, stepwise manner. So your first concern should be to find the apex. So you have the marker roughly towards the left of the patient and you look at your patient. If he's the rangy tall one or the COPD barrel chest, his uh, heart will probably be a little bit more vertical, so the apex should be maybe a little bit more medial. Whereas if you have someone that is overweight, or for instance you have a pregnant woman, well, that should tend to push the heart a little bit more horizontally, so the apex should be a little bit more towards the lateral aspect of the chest. If it's rather non-defined, well, a good place to start would be uh, roughly around the fifth intercostal space, uh, just below the nipple line. You can, also ask the, uh, you can also palpate the uh, apical pulse and just put the probe where you feel it. So let's try this marker towards uh, the left of the patient. And now my goal is to find the apex. So the first goal... Okay, so now I'm going to slide the probe until I'm happy and I know that it faces right, is just over the apex here. Our next goal is to try to put the, the heart vertical in the screen. And we will achieve that by rocking the probe like this here. And you see now the septum is really vertical in the screen. Our next step is to tilt the probe to try and find the best image where I can see really four chambers so that is the image we're trying to get. So in this plane of cut, we have the left ventricle, right ventricle, right atrium, left atrium, tricuspid valve, and mitral valve. So this is a good view to assess LV contractility. Again, the same criteria applies. Thickening of the LV wall, fractional shortening that should be at least a third and the opening of the mitral valve that comes almost uh, uh, that touches almost the septum that comes really close to it. Now in this view also we can assess for RV wall, uh, RV wall contractility or RV contractility by looking at the insertion of the tricuspid valve, so that we call the tricuspid annulus right there. So you see that it is pulled upwards on the screen. So that tells you that you, get, that you have great RV contractility. Now if we look at the apex, normally it will be mostly occupied by the LV. And when you have a dilation of the RV, it tends to progressively occupy the apex. In normal patients, you should have a ratio of RV to LV of around 0.6. There you go. So this is the plane of cut we're aiming for. Sometimes the plane of cut you will see is actually a five chamber view where you can see the outflow track of the right ventricle, of the left ventricle right there. So when you see this plane of cut, what you need to do to get a good four chamber view is to actually tilt the probe and lift the, the handle of the, the probe like this here and then you'll obtain your four chamber view. So five chamber, four chamber like that. A lot of the time in the um, in workshops what we see is people that try to get the best image but they're not exactly at the apex and then they focus. So really remember try to get really at the apex because this is where you'll have the most contact on the chest of the wall and also remember that once you add the apex rock the probe to put the heart vertical and then tilt until you get your best view. One difficulty that we often see is that the space between the ribs, like I said before, is kind of small. So a way to increase that 
is to ask the patient to put his uh, left arm underneath his head like that. So that will increase a little bit the space and can give me a little bit more space to, um, to get the appropriate plane of cut. The other thing that we need to realize, for instance, is that when I tilt the probe, if this is the ribs here, often I will bump into a rib. So it's really small movement that you have to do. Sometimes it's just to slide a little bit, a few millimeters, to try to find that opening between two ribs. So if you're trying to get that view and you're doing movements like this, you will never get it. So it's small movement and that's why the way you hold the probe and the fact that you're able to be stable on the patient also will have a tremendous impact on your ability to generate that view. So most of the time, by combining the information that we have on the long and short axis with the apical view, we're able to find out what's going on in our sick patients.